energy, 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 energy. So hello. <coughs> <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> so hello and welcome back to another Floor and the Novice Explorers video. This is part two of our How We Built Our Camper Van series. Yes, and Callum lied to you in the last video, in part one, he said this would be a two-parter. It is not, it's gonna be a three-parter because we forgot how much footage and how much stuff we've done. If you haven't already, go and watch part one. Come back and see this one after. As with all our videos, you'll find the relevant links down below. There'll be links to our social media, but most importantly, there'll be a link to our blog, which contains all the information about the build and other bits and bobs as well. That's enough chat. Let's get on with part two of how we converted our camper van. For our second piece of camper van furniture, we managed to cheat a little and we repurposed Meg's old bedside table. This saved us a lot of time and frustration. The size was absolutely perfect. We removed the old drawer and cupboard door and painted it grey to match the other furniture we created in part one. To carry on our driftwood beach theme, we again created a replacement cupboard door and drawer fronts out of pallet wood, continuing with our blue accent colour. Once again, we used our Annie Sloan paint. We also used a mixture of Annie Sloan waxes to get our desired effect. We used the old door as a template and cut it down to size. This made the job pretty straightforward. It felt really good to breathe new life into this otherwise unwanted piece of furniture. Repurposing and recycling was a big part of our build. It was now time to create a new cupboard door, one that was a bit more in keeping with the rest of the van. As we had done before, we used off cuts of wood to create the braces. These were glued and screwed for extra rigidity. We loved working with pallet wood. Yes, it's a lot of sanding, but it's a free material with plenty of personality. We also like to recycle and repurpose as much as we can. For the drawer, we removed the decoupage front and replaced it with more pallet wood. Again, this required plenty more sanding. Then it was just a case of reattaching our newly created cupboard door. We were able to use the original hinges which made the job a lot easier. At this point we were really happy with our two base unit cupboards. They still require a lot more work to make them functional so stay tuned. Now onto the carpeting. We were nervous about this task. We'd done a lot of research on how we were to achieve a professional look, but our expectations weren't exactly high. We removed all of the old ply, which is a pretty straightforward job. You do need an Allen key for the gray ply that comes factory fitted. Slotting a flat headed screwdriver underneath helps to tease out the old fixings. We gave the new kit a test fit. One thing we had to do was add a small hole for our electrical cables to enter ready for wiring up. We sprayed the carpet and ply separately, left them for a few seconds to allow them to get tacky. The glue and carpet were both quite forgiving and you could peel it back off if you were quick enough. We laid the ply onto the carpet and smoothed out from the centre. This removed any bubbles or creases we might have had. We started off with the easy part. 
cutting the carpet to the right size and shape using the new ply as a template. We left a small overlap around the edge to get the best finish and securely fix it so it didn't peel back off. With the ply panels completed, it was time to move on to the metalwork. The aim is to use one length of carpet for this. The less cuts, the better. Starting off by laying out the carpet, offering it up and planning your next move. We started by spraying glue along the top corner and laying on the carpet to hold it in place. Keeping in mind where the panels were to be reattached as these areas will not need to be carpeted. Sometimes you need to make cuts as the huge sheet of carpet can be overwhelming to deal with. To attach the ply, we decided to have our trim fixings accessible, just so we can easily access the wiring if there's a problem. This meant that they would be on show. To make them blend in a bit more, we spray painted them grey. There are two parts to the fixings. The white female piece had to be pushed or knocked into the existing holes around the van. We had to trim any excess carpet back as this would interfere with the trim fixings. Once the surrounding metalwork was carpeted, we reattached the newly carpeted ply with our trim clips and screwed them into place. We had to poke holes through the carpet guided by the ply, which was pre-drilled to line up with the trim fixings. We then continued the process of carpeting the metalwork and tapping in the trim fixings. Carpeting the van was a lengthy process and you had to work with all the contours of the van. Once we'd completed carpeting the metalwork, we refitted the panels to keep us motivated. This is what our trim clips look like once fitted. They're visible, but not an eyesore. And nowadays we don't even notice them. We've also recovered our ceiling with headlining fabric and fitted it back in place. All of a sudden, the van felt very cozy and warm and it had transformed the feel of its empty shell. Our top tips for this task would be to plan what you're going to do, organise your work area, work cleanly and quickly, use a sharp pair of scissors or blades, and wear gloves to do all you can to avoid getting glue on the front of your carpet. For this job, we purchased one length of grey wood effect vinyl. This was to complement our interior aesthetic. We made sure our flooring was as level as possible and we taped over the screw heads underneath to avoid them showing through. We laid the vinyl flooring out and allowed it time to uncrease and become flat as it had been rolled up during transport and storage. We gave it an initial rough cut and decided to spray glue down the middle of the van to keep it in place. This made it much easier. We use Nemesis spray adhesive and it worked great. Just be careful of the fumes and keep your van well ventilated. We then went on to make final adjustments. We tried our best to get a neat finish, but we knew that any mistakes would be covered by our furniture.
We protected the carpeted walls with newspaper and masking tape, as we knew the glue would make a big mess if we oversprayed. We sprayed the glue on the ply floor and the vinyl to get the best contact. We were pretty pleased with the end result, but we needed to finish it off by adding a trim by both entrances. We sourced a basic black plastic trim from B&Q, measured and cut it to size. We then just used glue to stick it into place. We felt really lucky when we found this trim. All we had to do was adjust the length. Otherwise, it was a perfect fit. The rear door entrance had more of a curve to it. This caused us issues. We attempted to shape the trim by heating it up in boiling water. This was unsuccessful, so we used a hairdryer. At this point, a heat gun would have been great. We managed to bend the trim around in the end, but after we'd finished, we realized that there was a flexible trim that you can buy online. We would recommend using this. We'd thought about and planned the bed design more than any other aspect of the van. It needed to be comfortable, strong, include storage and be able to stow away. We'd sketched up a few designs which really helped make our minds up. We started off by making the frame. We purchased sturdy length of wood and began measuring the length and height we would require. This is our first piece of furniture we built from scratch, so we took our time to make it as sturdy as we could. We invested in some extra long screws and angled brackets to make sure the build was solid. We made three identical frames. Two would be stationary and act as the bench, while the third would slide in and out across the floor to create the extended bed. Later on in our build, we purchased an impact driver. However, we wish we had bought this much earlier, as it would have saved us a lot of time and effort. The basic structure was coming together. Again, a top tip, learn from our mistakes. Drill pilot holes when screwing two pieces of wood together, especially larger, thicker ones like our bed frame. Many a time we neglected this in the past and split our wood. Now we began the process of spacing out our bowed slats. We needed them to be close enough for support, but spaced out enough to allow another slat to slip in between an interlock. We then screwed them in place on the bench seat frame. On to the pull-out aspect. We needed to decide on the length of the pull-out and trim the bowed slats to size, making sure we trimmed an equal amount off each end to keep the bow. We purchased these slats from IKEA. These were king size, but they come in all sizes, single and double. They were pretty cheap too. We attached the slats at one end to the pull-out frame and slotted them in the gaps we'd measured. They are bowed to help lumbar support, and we know the importance of a good night's sleep. Having slats means more ventilation compared to a flat surface. This will help prevent moisture buildup and mould. Our first pull-out test went swimmingly. We felt confident enough to place on our temporary foam and give it a try.
Once we were happy, we went on to complete the aesthetic and functionality of the bed and clad one end with pallet wood. We then got to work making more cupboard doors for the bed storage. We were getting pretty good at this now. These would be attached with basic hinges and kept in place with roller catches. Having these cupboard doors helped the storage area look tidy and keep everything out of the way. At some point we'll be putting our electrics under there too, so it'll give them a safe home. We were really happy and felt so accomplished after creating our basic bed frame. The bed at this point is still far from finished, so stay tuned to see door handles, electrical sockets, new foam, and my personal favorite, the bespoke upholstery. To maximise the available storage in our van, we bought a Kiravan's door store. However, we decided to jazz it up a little. To do this, we purchased a roll of fabric which had an antique style matte print on. We glued it to the inside of the storage pockets using some leftover adhesive we had from the carpeting. The matte fabric is subtle, but it's little details like this that really help to personalise your build. We also used excess carpet to cover the exterior of the door store to make it more in keeping with the van's interior. The beauty of working with a four-way stretch carpet is that you can often get a really nice professional finish. It was important to neaten up the edges as there was no room for an overlap. The trim fixings were supplied and we had to poke them through the carpet. It was a little difficult putting them in as it wasn't designed for extra carpet to be added and that few extra millimetres. Due to adding the carpet we had to push a little hard on the trim fixings to get them in place. But once they were in they felt very solid. This was a relatively easy job, and even with our personalisation. You can store a few small items in the pockets, but be sure not to let them overhang as they will scratch the side of your van and cause some serious damage. In ours we store our day-to-day easy-to-reach items, like our side window blind, toothbrushes, toothpaste, floss, sun cream and sunglasses. We had always planned to store our electrical setup underneath our bed. We used a hole saw to make circular holes that would house our light switches, USB ports, 12 volt outlet and other bits and bobs as well. During our search we did struggle to find attractive 12 volt switches, so being placed here at the end of the bed they were somewhat hidden yet still accessible. Under the bed was the perfect spot to install everything we needed for our electrical setup. We have an MPPT charge controller, fuse box and 12 volt battery, which we later upgrade. This is a rough view of the wiring and setup before it's all tidied and boxed away for safety. We also have an MT50 display unit, which tells us the status of our batteries and solar panel. Callum has learned a lot during the extensive research for our build. We recommend learning as much as possible so you can fix, maintain and upgrade as you go. We only deal with 12 volt to keep things simple.
we fitted two light switches so that we could have independent control over the lights in the back of the van. We opted to upgrade to two 100 amp hour AGM Ledger batteries. As we rely completely on solar, we needed to be able to store as much power as we can. We removed our old battery and wired in the two new batteries in parallel. This effectively doubles our storage. It is very important to do your own research. It may be boring, but it's very necessary to avoid a disaster. Invest in good quality cables and fuses and make sure they are rated appropriately. This is how it now looks all boxed in and tidied up. We've added a couple more USB ports underneath the bed. It was time to finish our furniture and install each piece safely and securely into the van. But there were still a few things we needed to do to finish them off. We began by adding rope handles to all the cupboards and drawers, using knots to keep them in place, and a few staples for good measure. I really enjoyed this job. It tied each piece of furniture together and in my humble opinion, I think they look amazing. I can remember how impressed and excited we were at this point. We had created these pieces from old or ugly bits of furniture and given them a new lease of life in Flora. All the pieces of furniture were then lifted in and put into position, ready for installing. We thought the best way to secure the furniture was to anchor them to the floor of the van with heavy duty brackets. We then added some reinforcements to some areas of the furniture for a more secure fix. These are simply glued and screwed. For the old bedside table we had to remove the back corner for a better fit. We added brackets to this too. We used the same method for the bed as you can see more clearly here. As a finishing touch to our tall cupboard we added a curtain made of our matte fabric. This hid the wheel arch. In part one, you would have seen me and Meg create two lengths of copper pipe. We are now using this to stretch the material as a sort of curtain rail. This curtain will hide the wheel arch and also provide a little bit more storage. As you can see, the installation isn't the most glamorous of jobs, but we were so thankful to finally get the furniture in. and actually having storage within the van that was permanent was very exciting to us, possibly too exciting for Meg. We added self-adhesive corkboard to the sides to improve the look and to serve as a handy spot to keep mementos. We made stoppers out of driftwood and added rustic coat hooks too. Adding a new pallet wood worktop to the bedside table added more character. Finally, we added a copper pipe towel rail to finish the look. Thank you very much for watching part two of our build series. We really do appreciate it. Part three is almost ready to roll as well. So please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to get updated when we upload videos. Yes, and check out our social medias for any more updates. 
and stay tuned for more European action video as we leave in a matter of days. Peace out and stay hungry. You're supposed to lie <laughs> down, you f***. <laughs> <laughs> Happy? Happy as f***ing Larry. <laughs>